Today I want to discuss this question from six years and nine months ago. Nice. Which is can A be one and A be two and A be three at the same time, right? So you see A double equal one and A double equal two and A double equal three is a ridiculous condition to write. And obviously this can never be true, but is it true? Well, this question has many answers and many implementations. And one of them is by yours truly, again, six years and nine months ago. So I came across this question, I think the same same date when I also answered this and this was such an interesting question not because I knew the answer this answer is something I did not know at the time but this was an answer which I tried to make because the question is so interesting that how do you create a variable which is three values at the same time inside of JavaScript because that is what I knew I want to walk you through about this implementation I think it would still work I'm not sure I have not run this code in like years literally like six years so I want to try this code out and I want to see like if it it works or not so let's talk about this structure right I'm gonna run this in a browser but I just want to quickly talk about the code a little bit before running in the browser we have three files basically out of which two of these files worker.js and modifier.js both of them are web workers right and this main.js actually executes in the main thread so this obviously does not work on file protocol so we will need a small server so let's spin up a Python server and again shared array buffer is not defined because we are likely running it on localhost on an unsecured network and since the time I wrote this answer back in 2018 this has actually been disabled and you know secured a lot because of Spectre and Meltdown if you have heard about those vulnerabilities maybe you can talk about them again at some point but if you want to use this you would have to customize a few headers right so let me just do that real quick by the way this video is sponsored by CodeDam just kidding CodeDam is the platform on which I work so I just wanted to quickly inject this offer for you if you check out codedam.com slash code day right now, you will see 80% sale on Codedam's pro membership. And it includes a lot of features from coding labs to projects. We in fact even introduce many more challenge lists on Golang, C, C++, JavaScript, Express.js, Rust and so much more is coming up as we are talking. Among many learning paths, coding courses and technology of future including AI for helping you out for building and creating apps. I have left the link for Code Day landing page in the description. If you are trying to become a programmer, do check out Pro Membership. This offer is very limited we are just running it for three days for Halloween and Diwali celebrations and then the offer will go away and in fact the offer for 80% itself is only for a limited time the discount reduces every single hour now on to the video so I'll just quickly enable this instead of you know manually trying to patch things here and there and relaunch my Chrome browser and I would make sure that I disable that also right so don't enable this on your own computers this has been disabled for security reasons so now when I go ahead and open the server again Again, let's hope it works and nope looks like we have to write our server now so let's just go ahead and do that okay awesome so now we have a few errors injected by my Chrome extension so I would get rid of them right so now we have a clean console and I want to make you understand what's happening right so let's just try to reduce the constraint first of all right so we'll just check instead of a equal to 1 and a equal to 2 we'll just check for just 2 right not in not 3 so what's happening you are getting a message you should have never seen this which I also write over here right what's happening over here let's discuss about this so you have a main.js file a modifier and worker.js file right so you know that JavaScript is single threaded so over here we know that JavaScript is a single threaded language what this means basically is that you cannot be running two things parallelly you can run things concurrently but not parallelly what that means is let's say if you have a command which is going on const a is equal to 100 const let b is equal to 200 and then then const c is equal to 300 or you know let's see is equal to a plus b for example and then somehow somewhere in some other code in some other file or whatever if you're trying to modify c equal to b plus b minus a or something like that these two lines can never run parallelly in the main thread in the JavaScript world right because the main thread would always execute one single statement on the CPU at a given time it would not be able to use the memory it would not be able to share the memory among execution 
executions, right? So you cannot have two synchronous executions in JavaScript running at the same time. So then how do you create a condition like this where A is equal to one and A equal to two? Well, you obviously introduce threading in JavaScript and threading in JavaScript is not exactly straightforward because at least in the browser, it's implemented as workers, right? So there's a concept called as workers or web workers, whatever you want to call this. And the thing with web workers is that they operate under their own isolation, right? So they don't have access to anything, right? So they don't have access to DOM. They don't have access to elements of the DOM. They don't have access to anything. They can communicate with the main thread, but using an async communication method, right? With post message and all of that. And in fact, under normal use cases, their memory is also isolated. So anything which you execute over here inside web workers is isolated from what is in the memory in the JavaScript world. So that technically means if you crash your web worker, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can also crash your JavaScript main thread, right? However, there is an escape hatch for this. So this line on line number seven, you see what it's doing is that it's passing a reference to a shared array buffer, right? So what this reference basically means is that shared array buffer, first of all, what this is, it's basically a way for you to share memory among worker and, you know, main thread basically. And why would you want to do that? The reason you would want to do that is because if you are doing some computationally expensive thing, then serializing and deserializing messages is expensive just like we discussed about this on the React Native video, right? Where there was a bridge where you have to do a serialization and deserialization. Similar thing exists here also where you don't want to serialize multiple. Imagine like if you are processing some sort of video using VASM and FFmpeg and web workers, you would ideally not want to just keep on copying data, sending it to main thread and then, you know, getting it back to the worker and so on. You would want everyone to have access to the shared memory, to the same memory, which becomes dangerous, but it's performance boosting, right? It's dangerous if you don't implement it correctly but it 100% can help you with massive performance so, okay so modifiers is basically these two couple of modifier workers which we have then we have a normal worker we send the same shared array buffer to modifier workers also we send the same shared array buffer to the worker itself which is like the real worker let's take a look at worker now so the job of worker is simple right over here you can see that there is an array which is defined and when you access a property a basically which is inside here inside this specific context what you are effectively doing is returning the first element of the array, right? So you could technically effectively also do something like this, right? So this is also fine. The reason I created that in answer as far as I remember is because the question was a equal to equal zero and a equal equal one and a equal equal two. What you can't do, however, is not something like this because what it's going to do, it's going to copy this value, right? Then you are comparing it in the same thread. What this example proves is that you are able to modify, even in the synchronous check manner, you are able to modify the value of array zero zeroth element, right? So hence this little hack. Otherwise, you can also do something like this. So that's completely fine as well. But let's stick to this. So what we do is we initialize array, first of all, once we get the first message and we start a counter, right? And we keep on doing this. We keep on checking if this is done, if this is done, if this is done. So a worker, a single worker is running on 100% CPU, right? And it's keeping, it's keeping on checking when this condition happens. Ideally, it should not happen ever, right? Because this loop will never end because this condition will never be false. This condition will never be true. So you just keep on doing that until and unless this condition becomes true. However, if we take a look now at the modifier, you see the only thing this modifier is doing is starting a set interval and it's trying to change the zeroth element of the shared array buffer, which was passed before, right? So you see it's trying to do the zero, it's trying to change the zeroth element and it's trying to randomize it to a value, right? So what is gonna happen over here in the randomizing sequence is that there would be a point in this life cycles worker where the code is executing and this modifier modifier, one of the modifiers here was able to set a equal to one, which is like the zeroth element of this array, right? Which is what we are modifying over here. Then because both of them are running in different, different threads, this is a different thread. This web worker is a different thread and this web worker is also a different thread. So because both of them are independently running, one of them would be able to modify a equal to one. This would check. Yes, a is indeed one. The other one would modify it to be a equal to just in time, just in the nick of time. And your script would check. Yes, this is also indeed true. And then if you have another condition, then it would also become true, right? So now if I refresh this, you will see that as you incrementally increase, like if I ask if I add an a equal equal four here also, it will take exponentially more time because it's sort of like brute forcing your way into that solution, right? It's running right now in the background. We should see the console log anytime, like, you know, whenever it happens, it could take a very long time also. So the probability keeps on going down as you add more and more statements, but it is possible, right? The, the thing is possible. And you see that it, I mean, almost instantly 
likely happens if you just have two elements because the probability is so low in that case that it just happens directly, right? So it happened after once, tens, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 iterations. In the answer, you can see that for the third case, it took me 10 billion iterations, right? So the jump is crazy from 200,000 to 10 billion. And the second time, you know, it took 20 billion, I think. It'll take a huge time, but it'll happen, right? So do try this out. I would leave this answer, leave the snippet in the description below. There are a lot of other answers also, which are sort of, you know, smart and interesting. And we will cover a few of them in the next blog post, which I am shooting up as well. So that's all for this one. Make sure you like and subscribe this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video really soon.